good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, the final boss of the, the she sees. I'm, I'm going to speak about the, the the recording and kind of sonificating the obviously it's units where I do work and I'm kind of uh, having this very vague and very kind of loose tie to the Deleuze Gattaria reading and this concept of design and machine as, as, as this kind of research unit where the researchers do their work as a production machine in this whole system. Um, so uh, I work at the uh, Helsinki Collegium of Advan for Advanced Studies, which is a uh, uh, very special research unit inside the University of Helsinki, and it's there are human human studies scholars and, and societal studies scholars. And now there's a very new program, which is for artists. And my title there is to be a postdoc uh, fellow in the arts, and I'm doing my own artistic project, which is sound project called Philosophers' Voices Experimental Radiophony, and I'm supposed to do three uh, radiophonic sound works on these books that I've, I've uh, chosen and these are not going to be kind of audio books in that sense that they, 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 they do not need to um, include any kind of textual material but they're kind of more my sonic interpretation of, of what I sense and how do I kind of understand the ideas that these philosophers do uh, project in their books. I've already done the, some some sound work, which was actually broadcasted at, uh, something like four weeks ago in the Finnish radio broadcast uh, company of, of uh, football history of sexuality. And now uh, today it's going to be some some of these kind of uh, this anti origin and this production machine idea. But this all went so that the, the university actually changed in Finland, as, as I suppose it's changing in the world time everywhere in Europe. And it's become more and more in this kind of corporate university, which is like, which is uh, directed and kind of managed as it was a business, um, kind of, a, as it was a corporation. And we all are in, in this <coughs> Sensing very concretely this, this demand for efficiency and, and this competing and the university rankings. The, the director of the university sends us an email that now our university has this and this ranking and hooray and let's celebrate this and this all as we can. I think that we share this feeling of that it's not the kind of the essence of the university itself, so it's how it's supposed to be. And also the, the whole kind of um, concept of knowledge, how it has changed. Like now, in very, uh, it's very forcefully in Finland at the moment that it's supposed to be like a predetermined kind of information packages uh, for for some systems, and not this kind of very critical knowledge for understanding human being and, and for kind of free produced. Um, knowledge and, and this instrumental model of science and art, they, they are pretty much in a parallel context of science, the university and the art world. And I think that the whole kind of control and attitude in the whole research process is it's kind of getting more and more why first by funding and now there is actually in Finland there is this kind of unit of strategy research which is government uh, government administrative uh, funding system that already starts to uh, kind of narrow the research question. It's suggesting that ask these questions and you, you will get some funding. So it's getting kind of more and more. And at the moment there are in university Helsinki there's a lot of cuts going on and there's one thousand and uh, two hundred uh, people are going to put out, so which means practically every seventh person is going to put it out very soon. So it's going to be But the Pesky College for Advanced Studies, I, I started my work now at the, at the beginning of the, um, it's one year term, I work there, at the beginning of January, by recording these silent hallways. It's a, 
old building where silent hallways and the receiver scholars rooms are there and I started to record there not only uh, by the kind of the most obvious way that walking there and then directly into the microphone but also by putting the microphone at some particular place and then listening that kind of um, input taking afterwards. Then I was uh, recording copy machines and then I did a lot of recordings with my electromagnetic uh, radio, the microphone that, that captures the electromagnetic radiation that we actually cannot hear, but there's a lot of this in, in, in every electric uh, device that we do have, a very nice kind of buzzing sound all the time and very different in, in different kind of radiation. And then also those electronic locks, which is very um, that in, it's very much, I think, that it implies to the access uh, and the control of access to the knowledge and to the whole this receipts unit and this, this receipts community. There, are, you cannot go either inside or outside from the building by going with the electronic uh, these locks. And then also, I made some recordings of the voices of the receivers so that the those receivers themselves uh, were telling very freely about their receipts and their projects and their receipts question, etc. They were speaking about their own work. And actually they were kind of um, having this very reflective voices. They started to, in the middle of the recording, they, they started to kind of um, um, reflect that, okay, I wish, I, I thought that I would study this here, but now, now it turns to be like that. Quite nice. And also, I was very interested in, in, in the whole randomness of the small everyday sounds that, that are um, present there in this kind of ostensibly very silent environment, but I think that there are small, particular, very nice sounds and, and these textures that are existing there. And also, this had this because there is. Uh, um, referring to, to this, this um, demand for government, the government uh, to how the universities should be very efficient units and there is this uh, Finnish word pöhine, which means this kind of this means kind of bus but it, it's a, a kind of inter, the intellectual bus in a way that you should have this nice bus all the time when it happens so then I, I, I thought that this implies in a way in a very loud space and in a very loud uh, environmental kind of that that the tolerance for silence is I think in this kind of uh, near capitalist uh, system there is some it's it's not very tolerant for the silent spaces and for the kind of uh, this anticipation and the long term continuous and long-term elaboration of things. So therefore I, I, were, I was particularly interested of the small and almost inaudible sound. Well, and then, then the bus as a sound material, I, I think there is one thing, because recording, for example, <coughs> the lamps, this kind of um, florist lamp, and the ventilation machines, there is a very particular sense of time when you are listening for a long time for, let's say, a ventilation machine. Because it's, it's ostensibly, it, it, there is a continuum, but if you start to, if you can focus on your listening, on them, you might hear these cuts and these shishes and these, these uh, seams in the sound. There might be slight kind of clicks and arrows, and some kind of arrows in the, in the current feed and etc., which you can then notice when you really focus on your listening. So the sense of time is in this buzzing sound, very present. Also the sense of space, of course. Also there might be either dominating, sometimes it's very, it feels like a distracting sound, some kind of uh, machine sound that you do have all the time, or either inaudible, you think that this is very silent, that is what it does, it isn't. Also, when it comes to the copy machine, I, I was interested in uh, the, the sound of the standby and, and this difference between the standby and then when the copy machine is working, when something is happening. So, which, which is the different 
difference, there is a sonic difference between these two. There is this kind of hum of the machine when it's in the standby mode, but when it starts to work, it's kind of a change of course, obviously there's a few different uh, sounds um, and um, forming the, the act of the deficient machine. And, on, and also the sense of the community. There, because there are people who are walking in the hallways and having a small chat with each other, they are going to the coffee machine and, and the door, door slamming, uh, very soft door slamming. So the sense of community, the moving bodies, the people who are there, who are um, doing their work, is also kind of a <clears throat> present in the possible. Well, um, there's a sound work that I made, it's called Heavy Paper, and, and <coughs> I wanted to do it, it it's, it's a um, 10 minutes work of reading a book. I practically recorded every single page of one book, so I turned the pages and I recorded on the time, on, on the, so I didn't actually read the book, because <laughs> in a way that could be was being very quite boring sound piece in that sense. So, but but I turned, I, I wanted to kind of have in the sound every single um, page kind of um, audible. And I was interested in the, the embodied kind of the embodiment of the time of reading, that how and, and the tactile sense of the paper and touching the paper because now we read so much so, screen all the time, but also I wanted to kind of uh, examine the, the sense of the turning the pages actually and sensing the paper, the different textures of the paper. And also this, this uh, it's a little bit like linked to the idea of the writing monographs because now it, it's at the moment you should kind of uh, publish all the time in the open access um, um, journals. And, but the kind of the, the idea of the monograph and, and this very long term elaboration, I think, is, is also um, something that we should you know, really have there. And also the change in reading. I, I was interested to that whether whether there could be something that you could hear the sound when those thoughts are coming into, for example, how they are affecting the ways that, in a way that how are you turning the bait cheese, how they are affecting to your uh, breathing, and so that the, the thing that you are, that it has been read, how could they be present in the sound as well. So we are listening to a, a short capture for, for this heavy paper as well. And let's soon start to listen to those, but some of the things that I thought that um, I tried to I tried to um, capture in the song or examine it, explore in, in my sonic work where this um, that I thought that these systems of the Hesini Collegium of Advanced Studies, this research unit, I think it, it is somehow one system of interruption, but also including many systems of interruptions all the time. And they, different interruptions and systems of interruptions may happen in, in the environmental sounds, in the space-time, like, like in those uh, everyday sounds that we do have, those ventilation machines, uh, lights, etc. And in the thoughts of the researchers, there might be interruptions in the knowledge production and in research results in that way, and in career paths, which comes also in the question, and also in the economic conditions of the time, because also there, there all, all the time people are coming and going, having a different kind of uh, research places and different fundings. For example, some, somebody is three months only and someone is uh, six months and someone is three years and etc. People are coming and going. It's an um, international um, community. Um, and these economic condi conditions, I think, they are affecting to all of the other 
mentioned uh, thing in, in the whole knowledge produce very kind of very concretely in a way. But let's now listen to actually I I think that Listen a little bit about the heavy paper first. seven minutes or something, we can listen to some of that also, but then beforehand I made this because I had this kind of um, idea of stretching the sound, all the sounds, so I stretched also, I stretched also the speech of the person, so we can listen a little bit of that, uh, which sounds like that.
stuck in, in one kind of production uh, mode in, in the sound, you are stretching all, all stuff, all you are doing, shuffling to everything, and kind of um, you are just getting in, uh, falling in love with some special kind of uh, treating of the sound, uh, especially that happens to me like, sometimes. It's very nice to stretch everything and do something like that. But that was that. Some voices of the of uh, the persons were very interesting in that sense that usually when you stretch the, the, you they were losing so much frequencies but some voices actually were this kind of that they, they were very regular voice about um, still after their stretching process which was then I made one piece with, uh, in collaboration with one visual artist who visited there in a one philosophical conference in the Thinking about the global local distinction and the idea of global foundations and the idea of local circles, secret manuscripts, which are translated many years later into many different languages, the thought that there's some kind of invariant content that persists across all this time in these languages. I'm thinking about um, why we actually have fictional stories instead of having just true stories telling each other about what actually happened. We decide to talk about some things that didn't happen and what exactly does it tell about to tell about our minds that we do that. Kuulemme jatkuvasti erilaisia ääniä. Ukkopuolelta me tulee täysinkintäjä ääni lähtetään ja tuntuu jäätöjä. Automaisesti jätetään tiimaan, kun ne pihentyvät ja harjoitetaan. Tämä on myös kristian ääniä. Lisäksi verkkoskaneen sekä kaikkia verkkoskaneen julkaisuja. Kuvassa esimerkiksi tietää, että se julkaisumaara, mutta se tulee olla kuvaamis, kiinnitys. Sillä tavalla osa julkaisusta usein pankkeja. Then, uh, finally, let's, let's listen. Uh, there's some of those same voices in the but this that I meant to be like, let's see how, how long shall we listen. But also, at some point, this is kind of one silent voice. <laughs> Global foundations and the idea of 
local circles, the secret manuscripts, which are translated many years later into many, many different languages, and the thought that there's some kind of invariant content that persists across all this time in all these languages. Thinking about um, why they actually have fiction stories instead of having just true stories, telling each other about what actually happened.
Thank you, Tana, for giving us insight into your sonic work and into the background to it. Are there any questions you would ask, Tana? Uh, sorry, can I ask? Sorry, I, I missed the, the first part of the presentation. I got here when you were um, explaining some issues about how why you're interested in working with the buzz and doing these buzz recordings. Uh, but I, I wonder, especially when you show this piece on the book reading, right? Um, why, I mean, maybe it's because it's part of a, of a bigger piece, I don't know, but I would be curious if you can say, why are you using that in that piece, this recording of the hand, and especially with all these dynamic changes in the volume of the hand? How does it work with your idea of, of bringing forward the experience of the reading and this kind of more tactile experience of going to the book? Um. Well, I guess they were both kind of practical <laughs> reasons and, and the aesthetic reasons because it was made for the for the headphones listening in one uh, exhibition, which was actually the monograph exhibition in the University of uh, in one library in the University, of and I was thinking that and it was kind of in in the hallway where where all the time a little bit like noisy hallway, and I was thinking of if there is only the sound of the book pages, which is if I and I didn't want to manipulate that sound so much that it, it that I wanted to have the kind of the sense of the book in, in a way, the the real book. So there is this particular thinness in that sound. So I wish to have some kind of bottom kind of a current state of something happening there. So I wanted to kind of add, add the space also in that sense. But I made some kind of, um, there were slight changes in, in the sounds and I wished to do some kind of uh, more intensive uh, periods of, of turning the pages and kind of uh, being excited probably of, of what is there in the room. Actually in the book, very concretely, was written by the former director of the whole the Collegium of Research Unit, and it was about the, the existence of God or something like that. Um, philosophical book. Can I follow up on this question? Um, it, to me, it, it, it appeared as not a very interesting book. Because <laughs> um, you were like, like <laughs> it was going so quick, and as you mentioned, that you were also trying to capture the sounds of thinking. Mm -hmm. So for me, there was not that, that was actually lacking. So you were just like mm -hmm. leaving through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are there are there are uh, phases that there are kind of more uh, slow, but, but as I said, kind of slowly more slowly periods of that, that the pages are not turning so quickly. But as I said, that if I were, I have also a plan that I wish to actually read the book and record that reading, that silent reading, which probably would be like my breathing and etc. these kind of sounds, very close recording of reading. So, um, that would be <laughs> different, but I, I didn't do it. You mentioned also that I, I that your breath, breathing changes mm. when you come to passages which are either difficult or interesting. Mm. And yeah, I think that was not audible, at least for me. Yeah, yeah, not, not properly at that place. Yeah, yeah, there are some, some places that. Yeah. But the sound of thought, it's, it's something that I was to elaborate more. It's, 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 a, it's a difficult to, to project in the sound. But. Well, one thing, perhaps, in order to to simplify thought is to think of the ways we express thought. Because right at the ending, I, I thought it was perfectly in sync. I heard someone scribbling mm -hmm. on a paper at the end of that. Whoa, that's that's an interesting sound. And suddenly I realized, oh no, that's <laughs> someone else doing it here in, the, in, in in real time. But especially when it concerns um, academic books, well, often what you do is scribble in the sides or underlining. Mm -hmm. Passages, so perhaps that those are perhaps sounds that I didn't really hear in the. Mm. In the I don't know whether or not those were included in this uh, in the soundscape. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. No, do but, but that is perhaps for me that is kind of 
That is one way of sort of finding mm. thoughts like yeah, scribbling and underlining yeah, because true. that's yeah. But, yeah, that's true because then you really. Yeah, and I remember, I, I, I made a little, like, a <laughs> really, really, really <laughs> kind of a counteracting video. I also noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, had a, I, I was just uh, thinking about what you mentioned in, in the beginning of the presentation. You were doing things about life that were quite critical to the kind of new liberal implication of, uh, of the system of artistic research within the academ academia but, uh, that, that we're part in a, of a kind of new liberal economy and that, that also has, that, and has a quite clear impact on, on the academia of, 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 as such. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's I just interesting that you bring that to the surface because that's something that needs to be reflected mm -hmm. again and again. Yeah, in, in, the, in the position of the artistic research in, in particular, I think that there, because I, I'm not kind of perhaps thinking myself as an artistic researcher, so yeah, sorry, <laughs> but I think more that I'm, I'm, because I do have both scientific uh, education and then I do have an artist, I, a musicianship education before I used to be a Buddhist. But then mm, I, I more or less think that I kind of explore sound through both kind of studying it and making sound so it's kind of this kind of but, but, but I think that I am not making perhaps this kind of artistic research that is in institutional artistic research in, in a way and I think that there might be some some tendencies now when the art in the art world is trying to put it this uh, instrumental vehicle position, so uh, that it's going to be uh, one instrument for the well-being, for example, in the society, and not to the kind of the art for its own sake. And the artistic researchers might also have this, uh, there might be this hazard potential for the to for it also to put it in the position that is somehow um, kind of turning art to the scientific community in a way that I think that it, it might not be that that uh, good for the artists and the artists researchers I think it, you know what I mean so so so, so it's kind of could be kind of very easily in a kind of easygoing way to try to uh, define it as something that now the artists are turning the artist work to the science community. And there is the real um, concepts that come from the artistic processes that could uh, interact with the science community. But in the, uh, that's something that it's especially in Finland because there is a very kind of, um, it's a very delicate um, uh, relationship between the artistic researchers and the of the science university researchers. Uh, these kind of very particular struggles going on all the time. Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering actually, because uh, I think you mentioned the desire machine, and I was wondering how you came across that idea in relation to your work, you know, which, um, I mean, how you, which came first, or how, anyway, and how you came across it, and how you came to associate it. Well, I think that it, it just came when I was uh, very kind of randomly reading the Deleuze catalog, Antiochus, and, and the whole idea of this um, this system of production in a way that you, as a researcher, are working <coughs> in, the, in the bigger system, and when you are, and and, and in particular when when having this this. Anticipation for the results. Now, now it's when it's a bit so. I thought that it's the design machine, the production machine, is, is some, somehow present in the whole concreteness of the what comes to. But I was very actually inspired of the Erin Manning's remark yesterday about the activism and the artivism when she was very um, encouraging, considering the, the potential that the activism may have. Kind of on the contrary to the before 
uh, remarks and this dystopian pessimism that, that activism is not the way to, uh, it's something that the desire is um, to substitute for with the duty. But I do see that somehow in the real where the scholars and the researchers has to do so much administration. So if, if their time then would be kind of uh, divided with the administration and activism instead of the uh, uh, administration teaching and the own artwork, which usually might be some, somewhere there in the own kind of studies and research. So I, I see the activism also kind of in, in, a, in a way it would be in a very positive kind of in, it could come from somewhere here and you could you could uh, you could intertwine that into your own work. And I've been done in a lot of uh, university activism. We've uh, done this free free university months that we have lectures uh, outside of the building. Lectures that are not allowed to put the professors are not allowed to put them in the, you know, the systems of the, the, the students are not allowed to put to have their kind of uh, points. So this kind of um, this kind of free university stuff that you are not allowed to put, you know, the rankings you are not to, uh, allowed to. We are kind of denying that, that this is just for the joy of learning. It's kind of counter effects for the very efficient you know, university. Are there any more questions you'd like to ask, Anna? Then thanks again for presenting your work.